There are just a couple more definitions of things that we want to take a look at. The first one is called the center of a group. And the center of the group is defined as all the elements that commute with everything in G. We call it Z of G. That's kind of a tradition thing. It comes from a German word. But let's think about this. First of all, if G is an abelian group, if the operation is commutative, then that means that the center of the group is the entire group. And that's interesting, but not really all that useful. So let's actually look at our biggest example of a non-abelian group, which is, of course, our D4. Now it turns out that while this whole idea of commuting with every element might seem a little bit complicated, if we have a Cayley table, it's actually really easy. Because to commute with every element of G means that the row and the column that corresponds to that element should be exactly the same things in the same order. So for example, well, the identity is always going to commute with everything, so that's kind of a little bit boring. But in this case, R180 is also going to be in the center. Because if I look at the row for 180 and the column for R180, it's got R180, R270, R0, then R90, V, H, D prime, D. It's got the same elements in the same order. So, so far, Z of D4 has to have R0, it has to have R of 180, and are there anything else? Well, let's just look at them one at a time. If I look at the R90s, R90, R180, R270, R0, those all match, but as soon as I get into here, R90H is D prime, whereas HR90 is D, those are different, so it's not commutative. You should go ahead and double check that every other thing, there's something that it doesn't commute with. So, there we go. The center of the group D4 is just R0 and R180. Because this whole chapter is on subgroups, it shouldn't be a surprise that the center of a group is always a subgroup of G. We can prove that by, once again, using that two-step subgroup test. So I need to check that it's closed under the operation, and it's closed under inverses. Let's be really careful. What does closed under multiplication or the group operation mean? It means if A and B are in the center of G, then A times B is in the center of G. So let's assume the first part and try to show the second part. Assume A and B are in the center of G. And then we need to show then that no matter what other element of G we take, AB has to commute with X. So AB times X has to equal, we know the group is associative, so it has to equal A times BX. But B is in the center of G, so that means that X has to commute with B. We can use associativity again, so that has to equal AX times B 
But AX, once again, A is in the center of G. A has to commute with everything in G. So that's going to give me XA times B. And one more associativity. That gives us X times AB. And there we go. AB times X equals X times AB. Therefore, AB commutes with X no matter what X was in G. So AB is in the center of G. So whenever A and B were in the center, AB was in the center. Therefore, it's closed under multiplication. Same kind of thing, I have to show if a is an element of ZG. Then A inverse also has to be in the center of G. So, let's see. I know that for any element of any X element of G, AX has to equal XA. Well, let's do something a little bit clever here. Let's go ahead and since these things are equal, just like in normal algebra, if I do the same thing to each side of the equation, I'm still left with a true equation. So specifically, I can write A inverse AX A inverse. I multiply it on both the left and the right by A inverse. I get the same thing. I have, can do the same thing over here. Multiply on the left and the right by A inverse. Those things have to be equal. But A inverse times A is the identity. And the identity times anything is that other thing. So X A inverse. A times the identity is the... Or A times A inverse is the identity. So I'm going to be left with A inverse X. And there we go. So A inverse is commuting with every element of G. So A inverse is in... Z of G. And there we have it. It's closed under multiplication. It's closed under inverses. So that thing must be a subgroup of G.